is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the stream and today we are going to be kicking off our fourth season as you can see on the mound today we are going to be running with our big off-season acquisition walker bueller and you see the lineups there today i like what we got coming in the dish hopefully these guys can have some pretty big numbers on this season so we can have a successful year taking a look at some of our preseason projections Vinny Vasquantino going to lead us in both average and OPS Bobby Witt leading us in homers Pasquantino in RBIs Bobby Witt in solo bases and Pasquantino in war wow guess we're just a two-man squad aren't we well we'll see how the rest of the year pans out I have a couple of guys I think are going to step up and make some big plays so today we're going to be facing Frankie Montas um I can't recall at the moment if we've faced him at all in this franchise I know I faced Frankie Montas in previous games and I feel like he always has my number he's got a really good split finger and I struggle facing guys with good splitters and or change-ups and that's what Frankie Montas has to boot so we are going to be kicking it off with the top of our lineup with Cedric Mullins another one of our big off-season free agent acquisitions and away, away we go so Mullins gonna get a decent contact into this one driving into left field but Jordan Alvarez is all over that and that is going to be out number one so as we mentioned, Walker Buehler is going to be on the mound for us. You look at his numbers last year, just outstanding in 33 starts with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Seeing what that 2.42 ERA whip barely north of one and some decent strikeout numbers to boot. Facing Will, Wag Will Wagner to lead off this game. And we're going to try to go in on the hands with the cutter here, but Wagner all over it. We couldn't get that ball in far enough. Held out over the plate a little bit. So that's a little bloop single. Good pitch nonetheless. Able to kind of get some weak contact. But there is a runner on base nonetheless. So now facing Jordan Alvarez with one out. He is going to hit one into the old 5.5 hole. At 104 miles an hour. Thought I put that pitch in a pretty good location. But Jordan Alvarez is one of the best hitters in all of baseball. And he does some damage right there. But no worries as we go after Kyle Tucker in the same location. He's able to do absolutely nothing with that. And now we're looking to get out of this little bit of a jam we've created for ourselves. And Altuve is going to pop up a lazy fly ball to center field. And Gliber Torres is going to drift back and make the play. And we are out of the jam in the first inning. So Astro was able to pick up two hits there in the first inning, but not able to do anything with it. Now we have a runner on second base and Drew Waters at the dish, and he's going to lazily fly out to left field. Wasn't able to do much with that 99 clutch of Drew Waters, but still got Gavin Cross to come to the plate, and nope. Just a lazy pop fly, and that's going to be the end of that threat as we are through an inning and a half. It is still a tie ball game, but... The Astros are looking to do some damage. So Yader Diaz at the plate, some random catcher dude, 0-2 count, able to just find a seeing eye single to drive it into right field. And now they have a runner on first base with one out. Jeremy Peng at the plate now. And Yader Diaz trying to get a little greedy for some reason. Doesn't have a lot of speed, and he tried to take off an MJ Melendez. And the one thing MJ does good is he's got a strong arm there. So not the smartest play by the Astros, getting a little too overaggressive. Still don't understand the base running logic in this game. Too many guys swiping bags with absolutely no business. But we're going to be facing Jeremy Pena here, and, well, he's going to make up for it. He's going to drive that ball into center field, and the Astros could have had first and second with one out, but instead they've run themselves partially out of this inning. So now we're going to be facing the former Kansas City Royal, Nick Prado, and he's going to drive a ball to deep center field. Is Mullins going to be able to make a play on this? No, it is over the center field fence, and that is a two-run bomb for Nick Prado, of all people. Um, we were... We lost him after our first season because we moved him, removed him from the 40-man roster. Just a guy who hits for plenty of power but just cannot make enough contact. And it's coming back to bite us in the butt a little bit here to start off our fourth season as he hits a long home run to center field. So uh, try to get that ball up in the zone. Uh, Walker Bueller just did not get it exactly where I wanted, and Prado just able to tee off on this bomb here. You see it went 424 feet, exit velo of almost 103 miles an hour. 
Not the best pitch from Bueller in this game, but he's going to bounce back, and there's a soft fly ball to left field, and Gavin Cross, a little bit of a funky play out there, but he's able to snag it nonetheless. As we check out the replay that has now put the Astros up 2-0, they've already racked up five hits early in this game, so Walker Bueller struggling to settle in to his new threads in a Royals uniform. Back to the top half of the third inning. Oswald Peraza is going to go down with a strikeout there. Montas had himself quite a very good game as he's facing Cedric Mullins. He added another strikeout. Montas racked up a very strong nine strikeouts in this outing. So, like I said, I was worried going into facing him, and yep, that was about that. Now, if Vinny Basquantino at the plate, he's going to rip a... Line drive into left field, but he's trying to stretch it into two, and Jordan Alvarez has a cannon attached to his shoulder, and he's going to throw Vinny Pasquantino out. Trying to get greedy for two there, get a runner in a scoring position with two outs, but Jordan was having none of that. Back in the bump at the bottom of the fourth inning, Walker Bueller facing Yainer Diaz. Hits a slow roller that hits off of Bueller, and that is going to be a base knock. Yainer Diaz had himself a nice little game. He was two for two with a walk on the day, but Walker Bueller going to bounce immediately back with no issues from that hit ball and strikes out the hitter there. He had seven strikeouts on the game for himself. And Frankie Montas now here in the top of the fifth. He is going to continue rolling here. He's going to get Matt McClain, and that is going to be through five innings for the Royals. Now Kyle Tucker at the dish, rips a ball, and I don't know what Vinny Pasquantino was doing on that one. That should have been the easiest of plays, and suddenly we got to run around first base, and it's not getting any easier as Jose Altuve is going to rip one. Peraza with the slow reaction, really silver shield defender, and not able to make a play on that ball. That was frustrating. Now we're, we're, we're cooking with gas with the Astros, but... Walker Buehler says, fine, I'll do it myself. Strikes out Jordan Walker. Yader Diaz at the dish again. And after a tough battle there is going to work a nine-pitch walk. Base is loaded now. Oh, boy. But Walker Buehler says, fine, I'll do it myself. Get a little bit of the Avengers in there for you fans out there. So back at the dish here, Gliber Torres. 3-2 count. He is going to soft liner into right field, but that is going to be a base knock. It was a good day for Gleyber Torres, one of the few guys in the lineup who was able to do anything. He finished the day 2-3 for three with a walk. And, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's not about as hard as you hit it. He hit it against the shift and just easy little single into right field. So that's going to be the end of the day for Frankie Montas. He is going to go six and a third, give up three hits, one walk, nine strikeouts, but he is still responsible for that runner on first base. Seeing if we can do a little bit of damage here and cut into that lead. Now, Andre Melendez is going to be first pitch swing and soft grounder to second, but hey, boot! Jose Altuve cannot handle that for some reason, and everybody is safe, so... Weak, weak error there by Jose Altuve. Altuve. Don't know what that was all about. And now Drew Waters making up for that out with runners in scoring position he had earlier in the game. Simple little seeing eye single into center field, and that is going to be a run as we slice the deficit in half. Now down only 2-1, to one, and still with runners in scoring position and one out. So, good job of Drew Waters staying back on this pitch. Didn't hit it very hard again, but is able to find the hole and put it in the right spot. And now here's Gavin Cross, and he's doing the one thing he can't do in this situation. Just cannot hit a weak ground ball to the right side there for the 3-6-3 three to to three inning-ending double play rally killer. So that's going to be the end of the day for Walker Buehler. We are going to turn to Asa Lacey. Walker Buehler's final line, six innings pitch, eight hits, one walk, seven strikeouts, and two earned. And Asa Lacey coming out of the pen, and he is going to work himself a nice three up and three down inning, and that is going to be the end of the seventh. Now we've got a tough task for us to face. Got a couple of high-end arms at the back end of this bullpen for the Astros. Starting here with Brian Abreu. See the numbers on last season. Very good strikeout rate. But Matt McClain's not scared of it. He's going to hit a hard line drive right back up the middle at 98 miles an hour. And that's what we're looking for out of a leadoff guy in this inning. So maybe we can do a little bit of damage. 
And now with Oswald Peraza at the plate, well, Brian Abreu is going to freeze him on a smoke show of a fastball on the outside corner. you got to get the bat off your shoulder in that position, meet. And Cedric Mullins is going to have more of the same as a nasty slider gets him to chase on the inside half. Now Bobby Witt at the dish and gets the slide step, but McLean just a little bit too good of a jump, and what a stolen base. I mean, I was surprised that McLean was able to steal this with the slide step, with the 97 mile an hour fastball, but you see the jump he got over there at first base. And now we have ducks on the pond for our best hitter with running the runners in scoring position, Bobby Witt. I believe he has like 98 clutch, but yeah, doesn't matter if you can't put bat on ball. Just an absolutely disgusting swing from Bobby Witt when we needed a base hit the most. So Asa Lacey now facing Jordan Alvarez in the bottom of the eighth inning. That is going to be an opposite field double for Jordan going against the shift. And now they are going to have a runner in scoring position. Jordan had himself a day. He was two for four with that double. Now facing Kyle Tucker. And Tucker is just going to lace one into center field. And there is the insurance run that the Houston Astros were looking for. Not quite what I was hoping to see out of Asa Lacey. Kind of getting touched up by back-to-back -back lefties in this inning. Uh, we expect a little bit more out of him being a lefty ace. So we're going to have to go to Nick Nostrini in this situation. You see the numbers last year, pretty decent overall. Let's see if he can kind of keep on the up and up and really shore up the back end of our bullpen in years to come. So he's going to start by facing Jose Altuve. He's going to get him on a nasty slider just off the plate. And now we have one out. Now Nostrini facing Jordan Walker. And that is going to be a soft ground ball to third base. That is a 5-4-3 inning ending double play rally killer. But unfortunately not before Kyle Tucker is able to get this insurance run driven in. And now we have quite a deficit to overcome as we are going to be facing the closer for the Houston Astros. The very talented, always difficult Giovanni Gallegos. You look at the numbers last year, 49 strikeouts of 46 and two-thirds, only nine walks, a pristine ERA of 2.7 and whip of 0.94. We have our work cut out for us here. Now, Vinny Pasquantino trying to start us off with something and just blown away by the fastball at the top of the zone. Not a good start. You want to try to start, especially when you're down two runs, you want to start with a guy on base, and that just simply isn't happening. So now we're looking at Gliber Torres, two for two with a walk already. What can he do? Well, more of the same. High cheese, no chance for Torres. You're not going to make contact on something up there. MJ Melendez, our last hope. Going to put bat on ball finally, but this is just a lazy fly ball. And Jose Altuve is all over it. And that is a Houston Astros victory on opening day. Houston three, Royals one. Unfortunately, year four is going to start with a big fat L. Um, thought Walker, Walker Buehler pitched pretty well, but, you know, just not as sharp as he could have been. You see the Astros, three runs on ten hits with one error. The Royals, one run on a measly five hits and no errors. Take a look at some of the box score here. You see uh, some of the notable players and look at the box score there. I mean, if we struck out 14 times, only managed five hits, you're not going to win a lot of games like that. But, you know, so be it. Sometimes you have days like that, and it's just what you have. It's just baseball, baby. So, anyways, that's all I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And uh, in the meantime, between time, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And uh, I'm gone. Deuces.